Okay, testing. Test one, two. Okay, sound looks good. So, I'm going to design something in OpenSCAD starting from scratch. Um, it is a fan duct. Fan duct. No? Can't remember how to comment. Okay, so I'm going to start with the things that I know up front. So, wall thickness, two. So that's just two millimeters. That's uh, going to be the thickness of the walls. Um, I know that the size of the fan um, in millimeters is 40. So it's a square fan, 40 millimeters to a side. And I'm just getting my ruler now and measuring. So the height of the duct will be about, let's say, 60 millimeters. Let's say 50. So this is going to be a little conical duct that will connect to the fan and blow air directly at the hot end of my 3D printer. Um, say duct Z. What did I say? 50. That'll do. So, um, so on the right I've got the code and on the left I've got OpenSCAD. So let's start with a cube. So it's a good place to start. Um, so it's going to be fan XY in the X direction, fan XY in the Y direction, and let's say fan Z. This is just going to be a little bit of um, depth to grip onto the fan, so let's put that at, I don't know, 5. It's going to be good enough. And hey presto, we have a cube. It doesn't look anything like what I was expecting. Uh, because I didn't put the house in there. It's been a little while since I've done any open scan from scratch. Okay, so far so good. So then, um, so what I want to do is make a sort of a tapered cone shape that's hollow in the middle. So, let's put this in a module, which is a function, or any other name. Uh, module duct. Um, now I want to, I think, I want to have a, a pointy pointy end, so I'll say outlet radius will be uh, measuring my fingers now, let's say 5mm radius. So let's put a cylinder, let's spell it correctly, outlet R, and uh, height, uh, magic variable, who cares. Okay, so let's put that at the origin, zero, zero. See, it puts squares with their bottom left-hand corner at zero, zero, but cylinders at zero, zero. So what I'll do is I'll add an extra flag to the cube. American spelling. So true, and it'll put it at the center. Okay, so now I want to move that cylinder up by um, that amount. Okay. So I sort of gave a bit of thought to this beforehand as to the best way to do it, and I think it's this way. So, so now I've got a square that matches the size of the fan at the bottom, um, and then I've got the outlet hole that I want at the top. So now what I want to do is use a handy function called hull. Now what this does is it basically stretches elastic, like an elastic balloon around everything that's inside the code block and it, it shrinks it down until it makes a straight line uh, between everything, so um, I don't know the best way to explain it. Um, it makes sort of a a convex shape that contains all the parts within it, I guess. Can't make a concave shape, it fills in all the gaps in between things. Anyway, that's what it does. So it's generated a a shape that includes the parts you specify as its extents. So that's pretty pretty handy for stuff like this. Um, but now I want to either put a skin on the outside or hollow out the inside. Um, so what I could do is um, change that, make another module that starts with a duct inside and then 
is a difference. So difference is basically a subtraction. So if I if I subtract it from itself, I get a nothing. I get an empty space. Gone. Oh no. Um, but if I um, take this and I scale it by uh, 1.02, let's start with 1.1. Scale by 1.1 in x and y and 1 in z. What's this? What's this? It's the hollow shape I want. So um, let me do this to explain it a little bit. So it's just created. Oh, why did it do that? It's created two. Um, move them a bit close together. So the scale one is 10% bigger in X and Y, but the same height. So it's basically just blonde up a little bit, and then I can subtract the shape I do want from the inside of the shape that's too big. And um, hey presto. Um, sorry about that blinking. To better illustrate that, I'll um, move this across a little bit and everything will go to hell. Um, because I've chopped the chunk out, but I've moved the, the chopper out of the way. So if I put a special character in front of that, it will draw it... Oh, no, that's the wrong special character. So you can see The red shaded thing is the bit that's doing the chopping, and it's chopping out that chunk there, and then if I render it, it's gone. So I'll take that back out, and now the red's exactly in the middle, and I get the shape I want. Um, so I'm hoping that that will be a nice friction fit on the fan. Um, so the, one of the many joys of parametric design is I can go in and um, move that. Strictly speaking, I should be moving that by that on 2. So if I go increase that to 10, now I've got a deeper sleeve, so there's more friction to grab onto the fan. And um, that'll blow onto the, onto the hot end of the print. So now the, the wall thickness I didn't end up using because I used the scale by 1.1. 1 .1. Um, technique. So if I wanted to be more rigorous about this, um, what I should have done is gone scale equals um, fan xy um, plus 2 times wall thickness divided by fan xy. I think that will that will give us you know the proper way of doing it. Um, so if I uh, scale's a keyword scale val. So if I do that, yeah yeah, so I just did echo scale val and then the console down here it echoed 1.1. .1. So you know I'll do things properly and put in the scale valve. That way, if I had problems printing it uh, two millimeter, um, just so I don't have to keep pressing F5, I'll make it automatically render it. Um, so I can, if I have it to print, have trouble printing two millimeter walls, I can change that to three, and the walls get thicker. Hey presto! Well, the walls at the base get thicker. It's not quite right at the top. So you know, I'm cheating a little bit here. Um, I guess what I should do is maybe scale up the the cylinder properly, or I could do uh, Minkowski and then subtract the inside. That's a bit heavy on the um, heavy on the Hertz. Well, you've basically seen everything there is to see already. Um, what I might do is do the Minkowski thing, just because it's the proper way of doing things, and it'll get me a better result. Um, so feel free to stop watching now if you don't want to see the 
probably the better, strictly correct way of doing it. Um, okay, all the non-nerds can leave now. Bye-bye. Hello, nerds. Um, so, if I go... Minkowski duct. So, Minkowski is a bit hard to explain. Um, so, to my understanding, a Minkowski takes the first object, so let's give it duct inside, and it takes another shape and sort of puts that shape in every position of the first shape. Um, it's odd. Um, so, for example, if I do this, and I assume Minkowski is Russian. So, what it's done is it's taken the original shape and basically glued a bunch of spheres to the outside of it. It's gone over the whole surface and inside, but you don't see that, and stuck a sphere on it everywhere, because I've specified sphere here. Um, that's why the corners are a little bit rounded, because it, it's, um, it's actually put a sphere on the corner. Um, so now if I put a, a difference, or a subtraction, if you like, at the top, and then subtract from it duct inside, um, what happened? Uh, the tops and bottoms are sealed up, aren't they? Hmm, this is a problem. So, if I could zoom, um, what I might have to do is put a cube, that's 10 by 10 by 10, uh, there, wait, where's my cube? Cube gone. Uh, let's make it 100 by 100 by 10. Chop the bottom off, and there we are. So, Nikowski didn't quite work because it put the circles on the top and the bottom, which um, unfortunately sealed in the space entirely. So if I printed this, it would be perfect, apart from the fact that it's entirely closed in on all sides and air can't get in or out. Uh, hmm. How do I solve this? I can't tell Minkowski to only go in X and Y, not Z, that I know of. Um, hmm. What can I do? But it does look like the thickness is is properly consistent all the way to the top, um, which is which is what I want. Um, hmm. Let's do it this way. So if I I'm getting a bit sloppy here. I really should be defining these variables at the top, but I, I just want to just want to get this done at this point. Um, if I translate this down by five, that'll center it out, and um, I'll have to translate duct inside up. by fan z on 2, so it's sitting at, all, all that would be doing is, um, so previously, yeah, without that translation, it was sort of sitting below 0, so I wanted to bring it up to sit on 0, it just makes the maths a bit easier. Put that back in, so right now I'm, I've, I've got this um, clipper here, that snips off the bottom, so it, it cuts that Minkowski stuff off the bottom. Now I want to do the same at the top. So it's minus 5 because I've created a 10 high chopper opera. But this time I want to move it plus 5, and I'll want to add the total height of the thing, which is going to be fan z plus duct z. And then we've got, a, we've got a chopper on the top too. So I'm going to snip off the bottom and snip off the top. And the end result will be the duct we want with consistent wall thickness the whole way up. Jolly good. One mil, I'll take those. 
Cool, so it's got the same thickness of the wall at the top and the bottom. That's awesome. And um, I, the fan that I'm attaching this to does have some holes in it that I could screw in, but um, I'm, this is very light and it's not going to have any force acting on it, so I might just leave it as is and see how it goes. Okay, that's all. Bye-bye.